Warm greetings to you from Silver Bay. It's uh, good to be with you and thank you for uh, tuning in today. I hope you are well and thank you for being a part of what we're doing here at Silver Bay. And we hope you're able to come to Silver Bay at some point over these next warmer months. It's a beautiful time to be at Silver Bay. Uh, my name is Bruce Tamlin. I recently um, retired from my position as the chaplain at Silver Bay. And Silver Bay has asked me to, invited me back to um, offer these uh, uh, sessions on um, living an abundant life, living uh, life with a fullness and a joy. And so these sessions are all designed to allow us to deepen in our life journey, to become more of the women and the men that we've called to be, and to, to know what uh, an abundant life really looks like. And so that's what our sessions are about. Today, um, I'm in the uh, Trinity House Library here overlooking the lake uh, at Silver Bay. It's a beautiful day out. It's about 70 degrees. And um, with me today is Austin Porth, Silver Bay's digital marketing and media specialist who is um, filming this for us. Thank you, Austin, for your help and support. Um, you actually make this real. And so um, this series that we're going to begin now on, we just finished a series, but we're going to begin a new series that will last a couple of months for us. Um, the title of this whole series is called Inner Work. Inner Work. And um, so let me try to, uh, uh, before we do this piece on inner work, um, one of the ways of coming to understand inner work is to slow ourselves down enough so we actually feel the sort of the ability to reflect on our life that way. And so I would invite us to just do a short sort of centering exercise and maybe you would find a chair that you're comfortable sitting in or maybe you're already sitting in a chair where you are. But I would invite you to find a relaxing place to sit and to feel uh, the support of the floor and to feel the support of the chair and to relax your body up into the chair. And let us just do a brief sort of body scan, starting with our feet and moving up through our body and seeing where we might be holding tension. And so let me invite you to just close your eyes. And as we take a moment to just rest into this chair, to start at our feet and just be aware of any tension we might be holding in our feet, and then slowly moving up to our ankles and then our calves, calf muscles and into our knees. And as we scan those areas that we're just allowing ourselves to be aware of the tension we might be holding in those areas. And so I would invite you to continue up through your knees and your thighs and your torso and your lower back and up your back and through your chest Again, relaxing into the chair and feeling the, the letting go of any tension that we might be holding on to. And then up into our shoulders and our arms and our hands. And then up and through our neck and our head just to let go of any tension we might be feeling. And then I would like to us to um, together do a short breathing exercise. And it's very simple, but what I would invite us to do is to be aware of our in-breath as we're breathing in, becoming more conscious of it focusing on it in our mind's eye and then focusing on our out breath as we exhale. And what I would suggest is as you exhale, you would say a word that means something to you, a sacred word 
It might be peace or joy or love or family or the name of somebody. And as you would exhale in your mind's eye, you would just repeat this word each time you exhale. And so let's do this for just a couple minutes together and I'll talk us through the first one, but we want to be aware of our inhaling, breathing in, and then our breathing out. And as we breathe out, we would say this word that we've chosen as a centering word. And then again, as we breathe in, be aware of taking oxygen in, filling our lungs, and then aware of exhaling. And again, inhaling, and exhaling, saying our word. So let us just do this together for a few minutes. So let's come back into the space. And I hope that you might be able to do this on your own, um, maybe for a longer period of time and maybe 10 minutes or 15 minutes to just center yourself and feel the beauty that is within you through this very simple breathing exercise, just slowing down. Thank you for joining me in this. So again, the beginning of this next series of programs we're calling Inner Work. And one of the ways of understanding inner work is to think about, for a moment, what does outer work mean? And so outer work, thinking about our appearance and how we look, and maybe how we act and how we behave and outer work. Um, we, we in our culture, um, outer work is, is strongly emphasized, I think, in our culture where we're wanting to look good and, and wanting to look appropriate and, and, and nothing wrong with that. But there's a lot of products that are promoted to help us look better or be more attractive or be whatever. And um, our appearance seems to be so important, our physical appearance, or looking good and looking sort of maybe in trying to impress others with how we look or our appearance um, of, of maybe our family members or appearance of our homes or our cars and so a lot of trappings in our life which is that of the external parts of us the outward part of us and so we're often feel like we're evaluated by how we look and what we have and what we accomplished. And um, so in contrast to all that outer work stuff, and, and you, you know, we've all been marketed to for our whole lives about products and things that we can buy that would enhance our outer appearance and enhance our outer life. And again, I don't mean to be critical of that, but there's a strong emphasis on that. In contrast to that outer work, there is this concept of, of inner work. And so what, what is inner work that way? Well, let me try to describe it in a number of different ways. And um, I think you would have some of your own thoughts about inner work and what that would mean to you. And I really respect what your thoughts are about it in that way. But inner work is this, what goes on inside us 
our feelings, our emotions, our dreams, our hopes, our visions, our beliefs, our inner psychology, our sort of deepest thoughts, our deepest intuition, our inner conflicts, our hopes, our inner pain, the inner brokenness we experience at times, our worries and anxieties. Inner work uh, begins to get at all of this as part of our life. And to explore our inner world, um, we, we have a lot of sort of, at times maybe in our lives, inner chaos, or maybe we, we are experiencing a deep sense of calm and contentment that way. But our inner life has fluctuations to it that, that way. Um, the goal of the goal of someone of doing deeper inner work that way is to really do know a, a sense of contentment and a deep inner joy in our life. And inner work, doing inner work, we describe doing inner work, is the opportunity to look inside, to become more aware of what drives us and what motivates us and what moves us and what touches our hearts, what is deep within us that way. And I, I think our culture, um, and again, this is a bit of an editorial, but I think our culture emphasizes more, again, the outer work and doesn't promote a whole lot of the inner work that way. Um, so I, I'm quite candidly, I'm a big fan of inner work in our life. And I think inner work is about coming to understand what we love and why we love it. And inner work is a term used to describe the opportunity to, again, look within us and to see what our life is about from an internal perspective. Another way of describing inner work is, is the process of getting to know oneself. It's a form of introspective self-care where you come to help yourself to let go maybe of harmful attachments or harmful habits or people that are not sort of supportive of you or thoughts that come in and be intrusive in your life that way. So inner work is an opportunity for us to come to know more of who we are and what we're about. Inner work can bring about insights for us, inspiration, personal growth. Um, Again, and I just I say this gently, I think so oftentimes uh, inner work is overlooked in our daily life, that, that we are pretty much preoccupied by what's going on outside, physically outside us, and um, outer work typically takes the precedence over inner work in our culture. And I just have this, again, this deep sense that the more we're willing to do the inner work, and it's not always easy to do inner work because we're confronting feelings and emotions and past wounds and we're confronting things that are not easy to do. But there's a real payoff to that. There's a real reward to working through that because we come to a deeper sense of inner joy and peace when we're willing to do that inner, inner work. I'd like to talk to you a little bit about Carl Rogers. Carl Rogers was the founder of client-centered therapy. Um, he's passed away a number of years ago, um, but he he written a number of, of books um, uh, that I think are, are helpful uh, in this whole inner work area. But one of Ca Carl Rogers' key sort of tenets, one of the things he really sort of talked about a lot and really lifted up a lot in his work was the congruence between what's going on within us and what's going on externally that our behavior and so our internal life and our external life and what he said was and he postulated and I think it's true that the more congruence there is between what's going on inside of us and what's going on outside of us, the more congruence there is between those two places, the, um, the more emotionally healthy we are. The more divergence, the more that, and the example would be, boy, the chaos is going on inside of me, but outside I'm acting like it's all fine. 
then we, that's, there's less emotional health there when there's a real discrepancy from what's going on inside and outside of us that way. And so, again, I like the work of, of Carl Rogers in this area, and I think it helps us to come to understand, again, a goal of the inner work is that sort of what you see is what you get. What you see in me is how I behave. There's the idea that what is going on inside of us pretty much matches what is going on outside of us. And then, we're ex then we experience again a better sense of emotional health. So if there's again a real discrepancy there, then we're sometimes we're living a life where we're pretending or we're living a life that has a lot of hidden parts to it or we're, we're pretending to be somebody we're not, or we're keeping secrets, or we're avoiding something, or we're hiding something. And so oftentimes we've been taught to live this way. Don't show that, or don't talk about that, or don't, that's not going to be accepted, or that's not going to be, um, you're going to be shunned, or you're going to be rejected, or you're going to be abandoned if you show that. And I, I just am a big advocate of finding somebody you trust to talk about what's going on inside. I'm not saying stand on the street corner and talk about it with everybody, but with somebody you really trust or somebody who has some training or somebody you really feel can help you to be able to talk about what's going on inside of us, our inner work that way. And so we don't have to pretend anymore or hide. We can be who we are. And I just, I, I want to say this um, as, as sort of intentionally as I can, that when you come to understand, when anyone comes to understand, that what's going on inside of them is important for them to be able to express in the appropriate way, and to be accepted for, and to be worked through, and to be figured out. I think so many times people are afraid to share what they're feeling deep inside because they're going to be rejected. And I'm just a, a big believer in the fact that whether it's psychotherapy or spiritual direction or pastoral counseling or somebody that you can reach out to who will come to understand and accept you and accept this part and be able to work with it in a way to kind of grow through it that way, to integrate it into our life. I just think that's so important. And I, I sometimes talk about people suffering in silence, suffering in silence. And I'm, I often say to groups that I have a chance to work with or individuals, please don't suffer in silence anymore. Be who you are to those that are appropriate to be with that way and be able to work through some things so you come to be your, your, your more whole self that way. Now, the truth is, we all have inner secrets. We all have parts of us that we wouldn't want anyone to know about. I have them, probably you have them too. But the opportunity to do inner work, inner work, begins to make these inner secrets or these inner hidden places, these parts of ourselves, it makes them more accessible and we're able to come to understand them and able to work through them when we talk about them in a safe and secure place that way. We, we come to, again, integrate them and they reduce our sense of anxiety and worry and emotional pain and we become more whole. And this is about what this whole series in 2023 is about, is, is coming to live this life that we've been given, this precious life we've been given, to live it with all its beauty and, and, and effectiveness and wholeness that way. So what I'm referring to here when I talk about some of these secrets is, is, is known in um, the uh, psychological therapeutic world as the shadow side of us. We all have this shadow. We all have shadow parts that, that, um, uh, that are part of who we are in our personality. And the idea is, again, back to Roger's thinking, is, is that we want to recover more of a balance between our inner life and our outer life. And we do that by, with the opportunity to integrate our shadow, to integrate those parts of us, to be able to talk about them in a safe and secure place, to bring them more into the light, and so we can work through them. 
And this is a process, again, known as doing inner work in our life. Um, and again, I will be doing a whole series uh, of programs on the topic of inner work. And this, um, the issues uh, of our shadow uh, that I spoke about will be addressed in a few of the future sessions that we're going to have together. And just a couple more general comments on inner work itself. The worthiness, um, uh, the, the worthiness of doing inner work, I think, can't be underemphasized that way. That the it truly helps us doing this inner work to develop a wholeness about ourselves. We become more whole as people. We become more integrated. We become more our truest selves more, again, the, the women and the men we were created to be. So inner work serves to lead us to a life of a greater sense of meaning and purpose and fulfillment and contentment, and again, a real inner joy. And the desire for doing inner work is more common and occurs to people once they've reached midlife. Um, I think this is an important point to make, and that is, is that, um, you know, the first 35 or 40 years of our life, we're developing, we learn education, we're getting our education, hopefully we're learning, we're growing, um, we might be um, looking to have a partner or to create a family or um, our career is taking off or hopefully and we're working towards a, a career. So we're sort of in this phase of our life, the first 35 or 40 years of the first half of our life, which is sort of this building, this life. And then the idea is, is that somewhere between 35 and 50 or so midlife, um, the opportunity comes along where um, we start to ask ourselves the question, is this all there is to life? Is sort of building this life? I'm more educated, more work, more kind of thing. Um, and so we start to ask the question, is this all there is? This has been characterized sometimes as a midlife crisis. And I really don't, um, I really don't like that term at all. I don't think it's a crisis in any way, shape or form. It's only a crisis if we don't handle it well. It's truly a wonderful opportunity if we enter into this midlife area consciously that way and being aware. So again, roughly between this 35 and 50 is when um, we desire and usually engage in doing inner work and when that begins. So I want to share a quote uh, about inner work with you and um, I, I hope this quote um, is something that, that has meaning for you. But it's something that um, goes like this. Until we find and discover the love and beauty that is within us, we will be challenged to discover and feel and find the love and beauty that is all around us. Let me say that one more time. Until we find and discover the love and beauty that is within us, we will be challenged to discover and feel and find the love and the beauty that is all around us. We often in our culture are marketed to, to you know, go here and it, you'll find a real sense of peace and calm there. Go to Hawaii or go to Tahiti or go to some place and boy, it, you're just going to be, you know, Disney World. And I'm not saying, these are beautiful, wonderful places, but if you don't have this inner sense of, of, of a sense of self-love and a sense of beauty within you, the beauty that is within you, it not, it's not going to show up out there. It'll be fleeting for you. We find love and beauty within us, then we will find love and beauty externally to us that way. So this series on inner work is, again, a goal is, is to find and discover the love and beauty that is within us. And I know this is possible. I've been um, working on this my own life, uh, on my own life for a long time and have been helping others to discover this in their life too. 
So let me just share with you some of the topics we'll be covering in this series on inner work. Um, here are some of the titles we have. Um, understanding our shadow side. How do we engage in inner work? How do we find somebody to do this work with? Who might we work on this with? Understanding our unconscious and understanding how our unconscious sort of helps us understand what's going on internally that we can address some of the inner work issues. We'll look at the role of childhood wounds and how those wounds play out in our inner life today. What does it mean to become more conscious, more aware, more understanding? What are the roles that dreams play, both night dreams and daydreams in inner work? The role of self-love and acceptance and that that plays an important role in understanding our inner life and our inner work. How does inner work and spirituality relate to one another? Is there a role for God in our inner work that way? And we'll also talk about reflective practices and exercises that we can engage in that support us in doing inner work like we did as we started today's session. And there will be other topics that we'll talk about related to the concept of inner work. Um, I do want to just share with you, there's a title of a book. Uh, the title of the book is Inner Work and it's written by Robert Johnson. It's a fairly um, in-depth book, but if you're interested in really going into this topic in a deeper way, you might be interested in um, Robert Johnson's book called Inner Work. And again, there will be other topics we will take a look at as we move through this concept together. So I hope you will join us in future sessions and um, please don't hesitate to share this with others if you think this might be helpful for them. We'd love to uh, invite them to be a part of this too. In the meantime, I hope you're well. Take care of yourself and I look forward to seeing you at a future session. Thank you for being with us today.